Rabbish Rahli Sadri Wayasili Amri Fahlan Uktadam Milisani Yafka Hukahuli Bismillah Rahman Rahim Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Muhammad Qasim's uh, online channel uh, where we are discussing the dreams of Muhammad Qasim in reference to the times uh, of the end times. Um, we're continuing our discussion today um, into the topic of Malhamatul Kubra, uh, which is the Great War, uh, the Great War that is prophesied in the hadiths of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This topic actually continues our discussion from previous videos, uh, previous sessions where we have discussed uh, other aspects of Muhammad Qasim's dreams in light of the hadith. Um, so I do recommend that you watch those videos in case you haven't, um, just so that you are better able to understand what we are going to discuss today and inshallah going on in the future. Um, in the previous discussions, we mentioned that the uh, Khilafah will return uh, as prophesied by the uh, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in his hadith. Uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said that there will be a time of Khilafah, then there will be uh, a time of rulers and uh, oppressive rulers, tyrannical rulers, and after that the Khilafah would return. And the return of this Khilafah would be in the precepts of the Khulfai Rashidun, the time or uh, the way that Islam used to be uh, at the time of Khulfai Rashidun. So uh, it is also agreed by many scholars uh, that the uh, time that we're living in right now uh, is that of the oppressive and tyrannical leaders. And uh, soon in the future, we will be witnessing the return of the Khilafah. Now, the time of when the Khilafah would come uh, is always something that many Muslim scholars have speculated upon. Uh, and many Muslims, in fact, uh, have wanted to know throughout time and throughout uh, the decades uh, when the time of the Khilafah's return will come. Um, but it's not clear or it hasn't been clear in the past until the times that we are witnessing uh, today or these days where we see that many of the hadiths of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he indicated about the end times um, of the events that will happen closer to Qayama that are coming true. One of them is the uh, Malhamatul Kubra, which is prophesied as the Great War. And um, this war comes at a time when uh, Muslims are in great grief. Uh, there is oppression upon Muslims all across the world. Um, and uh, the time of, of the Malhamatul Kubra is when the major signs of uh, Qayama, which is the coming of Imam Mahdi, the Dajjal, Isa alayhi uh, salam, and Yajuj Majuj uh, will come. So you can say that the Malhamatul Kubra or uh, this great war happens before these major events come, mm -hmm. or it transcends into these major events happening. Um, now we have, uh, first of all, a um, once again, let me just confirm that I have got my audio working alhamdulillah it is looking like it's working wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone who has joined us so uh, now we will continue on to uh, our discussion uh, actually in in the last uh, video we d we discussed some of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sayings or hadiths uh, about the importance of dreams uh, and the important streams, particularly closer to the end times, uh, when the Khilafah would return. Uh, and in those hadiths, we came across the hadith where there's a mention that uh, dreams or true dreams uh, are a part or 46th part of the prophecy. Um, now, this is once again Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the Khatim al -Nabiyin. He's the last prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is leaving a message to uh, the uh, Sahabas and the people or the Muslims of that time and the future Muslims to come. Uh, that after his departure from this world, 
there will still be glad tidings that will come in the form of true dreams. And these will be more important towards the end times. Um, now, there's another hadith that one of our brothers, Brother Hazim, uh, thank you very much, Brother Hazim, for bringing this to my attention. Uh, he found this hadith, and uh, we found a very interesting message in this hadith uh, that I wanted to share with you. Uh, this hadith is narrated by Ibn Abbas, and the hadith says that the Messenger of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, drew aside the curtain when he was sick, and the rows of worshippers were behind Abu Bakr. And uh, he said, O people, nothing of the glad tidings of the prophecy is left except a good dream that a Muslim sees or is seen about him. So this is the mentioning of the uh, the glad tidings or the dreams that are seen by a Muslim, uh, by a uh, true Muslim, uh, Sali Muslim, that are seen by him or seen about him. So uh, in this case, what is important for us to understand is that uh, as we have mentioned in the previous videos, that Muhammad Qasim's dreams, they are very unique. They, they are not concerned about the state of uh, dreams that you and I might see, which are sometimes about ourselves or about our family members or uh, about our friends. But Muhammad Qasim's dreams are in fact about the entire Muslim Ummah. And many of his dreams uh, that are concerned with the events of what has happened to Imran Khan coming true, uh, they indicate the uh, the divinity of the fact that his dreams are going to come true uh, about the Muslim Ummah as well. Uh, so thank you, Brother Qasim, for bringing, uh, sorry, uh, Brother Hazim, for bringing this to my attention. Uh, and uh, it does create an important understanding uh, for us. Uh, to know why dreams are important towards the end times. Now, back to our topic about Malhamat al-Kubra. Uh, the Malhamat al-Kubra, the Great War, is um, the final war. And nothing like this war has occurred uh, before in human history. Um, and uh, there are some hadiths that I will be discussing today. Um, now my idea is, or my the focus of my discussion today is not to go into deeper understanding of these hadiths, but we are going to make a connection of the hadiths based on what Muhammad Qasim has seen, and we are going to make a connection to the events that will happen in Malhamat al Kubra. Now there is a great deal of discussion uh, that is available online by many scholars who have discussed about the uh, hadiths of Malhamat al-Kubra or the Great War. Um, and I encourage you, if you want to get uh, more informed about these uh, events or the hadiths, uh, particularly uh, about Malhamah, please do uh, go watch those videos. Now, they're very informative. Uh, but we will begin with the hadiths because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has left many signs for us to be able to understand and to be able to pick up uh, the events that will happen during the uh, closer to Qiyamah. So we begin first with this uh, uh, very uh, prominent hadith. This has been discussed by many ulamas uh, and scholars when they talk about uh, the Malhama. And this hadith mentions a few important things. First part is the flourishing state of Jerusalem. Uh, which means that Jerusalem will flourish again. Uh, what it actually means by flourishing, uh, once again, there's a great deal of commentary uh, at the uh, scholars that have done. Uh, I encourage you to have a look at it. But essentially, what it's trying to mention here is that Jerusalem will develop, will prosper again. So perhaps there will be uh, a renewed uh development that will come into Jerusalem. Uh, as we know, uh, Jerusalem at the moment, there's a clash. There's always been a clash between uh, the Muslims um, and the Jews in that area. So their flourishing essentially would mean that there will be peacefulness and there will be growth in that area. So the flourishing state of Jerusalem will be when Yathrib is in ruins. So Yathrib is the old name of the city Medina. So when Jerusalem prospers, 
that is the time when Medina will be getting ruined or Medina will be going into a bad state. And the bad state of Medina, which is the ruined state of Medina, will be when the great war comes. So the great war over here is reference to the Malhama. Uh, and then uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu continues on to say that the outbreak of the great war will be at the conquest of Constantinople. So when the great war happens, at that time, there will be a cons conquest of Constantinople, which is uh, the uh, at that time, at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, present day it is Turkey, but at that time it was called Constantinople. So when the Great War happens, then there will be a Fath of uh, Turkey, uh, which means obviously, as we understand now, Turkey is in a um, a state uh, is a Muslim state, is a Muslim country. Uh, so for this hadith, uh, what is trying to mention is that there will be uh, another or there will be a time when Turkey will not be ruled uh, by Muslims or will not be under Muslim rule. And then there will be a const conquest of Turkey um, at the time of this great war. And when the conquest of uh, Constantinople or Turkey happens, that is when the Dal will come forth. Um, and then Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he struck his thigh or his shoulder with his hand like this uh, and said, this is as true as you are here or as you are sitting. So uh, what we can learn or establish from this hadith, a very prominent hadith, uh, are four of these things that I've highlighted here, that these events are bound to happen according to uh, the uh, saying of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. All right, so then there are more hadiths uh, that are basically also confirming these events that will occur. Uh, there is a hadith about uh, the great war that will ha happen, the conquest of Constantinople, which is once again uh, Turkey that will happen and the coming forth of the Jal will take place within a period of seven months. Um, there's another hadith that also says uh, some timings, which says that the time between the great war and the conquest of the city, Constantinople, will be six years uh, and then the Jal will come forth in the seventh year. Uh, now, once again, the, this hadiths uh, can have some uh, weaknesses in them, uh, and it's best that you explore these hadiths through the description or explanation of the scholars uh, that are available online. Uh, but from our perspective, we are looking at the events that are happening uh, as discussed by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then there is an, also another hadith. Uh, which is a very long hadith. Basically, this hadith is saying that uh, at the time when uh, Constantinople is lost, uh, there will be a group of Muslims from uh, the Bani Ishaq. Uh, they will come back to take Constantinople. And at that time, they will say takbirs. And uh, basically, the uh, gates of the city will open up to them. Uh, so uh, after this, once again, there's another mention that uh, the Dajjal will come after uh, these events happen when the uh, Bani Ishaq or the uh, Muslims responsible for that, 70,000 Muslims, they are um, hanging their, uh, their weapons and they're enjoying the spoils of war. Uh, that's when they will hear about the coming of the Dajjal. So once again, this uh, that mention. Now, there's also hadiths about the uh, joining of Muslim forces with some of the Byzantine uh, Byzantine Christians. Uh, they're also the Orthodox Christians of uh, the times that we live in today. Um, I'm not exploring those hadiths uh, over here, uh, but we will go into looking at Muhammad Qasim dreams and make a connection where, uh, where we can on those aspects. Um, then there's also a uh, hadith. This is... Uh, a hadith of the Sahaba, um, Anas ibn Malik said, Constantinople will be conquered uh, with the coming of the hour. Um, so this is once again also indicating that there will be 
time closer to the end of Kayama or closer to Kayama uh, when Constantinople will be conquered again by the Muslims or Turkey will be conquered again by the Muslims. So based on uh, some of the hadiths that I have uh, presented to you and some of the discussions that I have uh, read and heard from the scholars, um, we can determine a few important conclusions. Um, and the main points that I have written down in front of you, um, these are very important for us to understand and accept the way that these are going to occur so that we can discuss Muhammad Qasim's dreams in, in this context. Uh, from the hadiths, we understand that Malhamatul Kubra is a great war that is prophesied to come before Qayama and closer to the end of Qayama. In fact, it is uh, um, one of the signs of Qayama. Uh, when this war comes, there will be a time when Jerusalem will be flourishing. Uh, Medina will be in a, a bad state or a state uh, of going bad. Um, in ruins, basically, that's when the Great War will begin, Malhamat al-Kubra. Uh, we don't know how long uh, this war may take as far as the hadiths are concerned. There are some different uh, comments on that. Uh, but during the war, at some point, there will be a uh, conquest of Turkey. Um, and then that will lead into the coming of the Jal or the arrival of the Jal. Uh, so we can also make a conclusion based on the times that we're living in today that before this war there will be a point where Turkey will be lost um, and then during this war or before this war there will be a time when Saudi Arab will be in ruins based on the understanding of our Medina. And then there are some other hadiths that mention uh, about the casualties that Muslims will face. Um, and is prophesied that there will be many Muslims that will perish or die or uh, be martyred in this war. Uh, essentially, there will be many casualties. Now, uh, coming on to Muhammad Qasim's dreams, uh, Muhammad Qasim states that he has seen this dream, the Malhamad al Kubra, uh, many times. Uh, uh, this war, he has seen uh, this war in his dreams. And he has seen different events of this war happening in his dreams. Uh, and he has seen th these dreams as if he was present uh, in the events that were happening. Now, uh, if we can make a conclusion about what Muhammad Qasim has seen, uh, Muhammad Qasim says that Middle East becomes the battleground for this war. Uh, the war begins uh, in the beginning with Israel and USI uh, and its allies they begin a campaign in the Middle East uh, and then Russia will join this campaign with its allies in the Middle East. Um, the narrative that is presented in the media at that time is that there is a fight against terrorism, uh, but even the terrorists uh, of uh, those plans or, or of that news, they are planted by those claiming to bring peace. So this is a staged war. Uh, that happens against the Muslims. Um, and in this war, Muhammad Qasim has seen that Turkey and Saudi Arabia are destroyed. We're going to discuss uh, one of Muhammad Qasim's dreams in, in a bit more detail about this one. Uh, and then Muhammad Qasim has seen that there is, uh, in this war, there is uh, the casualties or the illnesses or the um, injuries caused uh, by this war to the people uh, it indicates that there could be possibly a nuclear or biochemical weapon that I used. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so now we're going to look at Muhammad Qasim's dream from 2017, where um, this dream describes the events of how Malhamat al-Kubra will happen in, in, in great detail. Um, and uh, we look into this a little bit more as I read through. Sorry. I'm sorry about this. <clears throat> it's uh, still winter where where I am. Uh, the south uh, 
southern hemisphere of of the world uh where most of the other people are it's the northern hemisphere or or the middle area so it's very cold here these days and uh, because of covid everyone's been sick uh so uh, I've, I've been trying to hold myself <clears throat> Uh, to not cough, so uh, I apologize if this happens again. Uh, but inshallah, we'll continue on discussing uh, here. So, uh, Muhammad Qasim stream from March 2017. Muhammad Qasim says that he saw uh, that Turkey falls or begins to fall, uh, whether this happens uh, from an economic perspective or a military perspective. Uh, we're not entirely clear on that, but Turkey begins to fall. Uh, and this is when Israel uh, uh, begins or gets very active in Palestine. Uh, and they start building a fort for the Jal. Uh, once again, there's a specific dream of Mohammed Qasim about what he's seen in, in, in this fort of the Jal or the castle of the Jal that is built. Um, and then Israel begins to form alliances with other countries uh, and starts spreading corruption. Uh, and USA allies or uh, allied with Israel, then they begin campaign in the Middle East. Um, when Russia sees this, that USA and Israel have campaigned and come into the Middle East, uh, Russia also jumps into the Middle East with its, with its allies. And uh, thus the war breaks out between uh, USA and Russia. So USA and its allies and Russia and its allies um, and this is essentially what Muhammad Qasim says in his dreams. He has seen this as World War Three, um, which is the once again we've we've got World War One, which happened at large scale, and World War Two that happened at large scale. Uh, but Muhammad Qasim says that this is the bigger World War that happens, and the battleground for this is the Middle East. Um, so many countries within the Middle East, uh, they uh, are uh, they become a part of this war, um, and the war is uh, essentially the countries like Russia uh, and its allies and USA and its allies. They are fighting for land, and whichever land that they grab onto, uh, they move on to the next one to capture more land, uh, basically. Um, so this leads to a lot of destruction uh, of the uh, countries, Muslim countries in the Middle East. And Muhammad Qasim describes that in this dream he saw that the uh, war spreads to Egypt, Sudan and Saudi Arabia, uh, Kuwait and UAE very, very quickly. Uh, and there are also a lot of loss of Muslim lives um, in this war. And then Muhammad Qasim also saw that many Muslim countries, they also start forming alliance uh, either with the USA, uh, Israel or Russia. Um, now, <clears throat> this could be the part, could be the part where the uh, hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam, where he's mentioned uh, the uh, Muslims joining the Byzantine uh, army and then the, uh, the company or the Muslims and the Byzantine, then they fight the others. What we understand uh, about this is that the Byzantinian Christians, they are the Orthodox Christians, and majority of Russia is Orthodox uh, Christianity, whereas we see the majority of the West is uh, of Catholic or Roman uh, Christianity. Um, so this could, could be potentially the uh, hadith that is described here that the uh, uh, Byzantinian Christians form alliance with the Muslims and then they fight the uh, other enemies of the non-Muslims that exist at that time. And then Muhammad Qasim continues on in this dream and he says that while this war is happening in the Middle East, Pakistan continues to prosper, um, and uh, we have discussed this uh, previously in uh, in our discussion about Pakistan's um, 
uh, chapter where we discuss the importance of Pakistan from uh, a multitude of different hadiths and the indications that we see from the hadiths um, that Pakistan holds a very important role uh, for the future of the Muslim Ummah. So Muhammad Qasim has seen that Pakistan is uh, prospering and growing uh, and Pakistan grows at a very quick rate. Um, it achieves a lot in a very short amount of time that uh, the uh, Western world or and basically the entire world uh, is surprised at how quickly Pakistan is able to achieve what it achieves. And upon seeing this, uh, then uh, India, which is uh, an uh, ally of USA and uh, Israel, and at that time in Muhammad Qasim's stream, it still continues to be an ally of USA and Israel. And then India begins its attack on Pakistan. Um, now, there are other instances of India's attack that Muhammad Qasim has seen in his streams, but we are not... Uh, we're going to explore them in a bit more detail in our next week's topic. Uh, but what he has seen here is that the beginning uh, of India's attack on Pakistan happens. Um, and then Allah protects Pakistan with 3,000 black jet fighters. Now, these are also uh, some comments have come across that these are also the black flags that have been uh, described in the hadiths of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, because Muhammad Qasim has seen that these 3,000 black jet fighters, they are the ones that save uh, Pakistan um, and then they go on to save or um, go on, Pakistan or the Muslims use these 3,000 black jet fighters to liberate the countries lost in the Middle East um, later after this. So. Muhammad Qasim then sees that Pakistan wins by Allah's mercy and this particular event, a very important event, this is the Ghazwai Hind uh, that happens. Uh, this war is imposed upon Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan does not choose to get into this war. It is imposed upon Pakistan and then Pakistan wins. Now Ghazwai Hind we will discuss in more detail next week inshallah. Um, but for this purpose, uh, what we understand is Ghazwa Hind is also going to be a part of World War III. So we've got a situation where the Muslim lands are being taken over, the war is ravaging, and slowly over time, Muslim lands are lost until uh, it comes to Pakistan, and then Pakistan uh, defends itself, defends Islam, uh, and after that, uh, Pakistan jumps into the Middle East, uh, and then it goes on to defeat USA, Israel, and Russia. Then Muhammad Qasim uh, saw in that same dream from March 2017 uh, that once Pakistan defeats Russia and USA, Pakistan becomes a superpower. Uh, and then Pakistan and the Muslims, they implement true Islam of Prophet Muhammad uh, throughout the world. And people really come to learn how peaceful uh, this true Islam is. Uh, then Muhammad Qasim saw that after a short period of time uh, in this dream, he saw that the Jal emerges or the Jal appears. Um, now the events that I have discussed with you today uh, as per the dream of Muhammad Qasim, uh, these events marry very closely with uh, what we have learned in the previous hadiths about the um, flourishing of Jerusalem, the state of Medina being in ruins, um, the uh, conquest or con conquest of Constantinople or winning of Turkey, and then the appearance of Dajjal. Now, the one missing link in, in here is the um, point that we have discussed about uh, Medina. And uh, the state of Medina, uh, actually, there is a dream of Muhammad Qasim. Um, he, when he's the leader of Pakistan and under his leadership, Pakistan is prospering uh, to great lengths. Uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, comes into his dreams uh, at that time and asks him to go to Medina and Makkah and say thanks to Allah. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, asks him in his dream, to visit Medina and Mecca. Um, and this is something that Muhammad Qasim has already seen uh, previously. Uh, and at that time, Muhammad Qasim says that in my dream, I then saw that uh, I visited 
Medina and Mecca and uh, the people of uh, Medina and Mecca they uh, were in great despair uh, there was darkness all around and the people of Medina and Mecca and then asked Muhammad Qasim uh, they say take us out of the darkness like you have taken Pakistan out of the darkness so there is that indication or connection uh, about the state of Medina being in ruins uh, wallahu alam what the state or what the situation causes it to be but it is indicating that the the uh, war that happens it will definitely have an impact on uh, Saudi Arabia and it will definitely have an impact on the situation in Medina and Makkah now pictorially there's also another dream of Muhammad Qasim uh, this dream uh, is the three castles of Islam and uh, Muhammad Qasim has seen that Islam in this dream Muhammad Qasim says that he saw uh, uh, by the way this dream is from 2015 so Muhammad Qasim says that uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, clarified to him in his dream that uh, the uh, castles of Islam or Islam is represented by three castles which is Pakistan Saudi Arabia and uh, Turkey and uh, Muhammad Qasim says that uh, in 2015 Prophet Muhammad wasallam mentioned that the last castle of Islam is Pakistan uh, and on December 4 2014 Muhammad Qasim says that Allah showed uh, Muhammad Qasim that two out of the three castles were destroyed by the wicked anti-Islamic forces and they faced not too much resistance so when this event happened uh, the Muslims were anxious when the first castle or Turkey was lost um, and then Muslims uh, were protesting but they there was no outcome out of their protest no one listened and slowly the other Muslim lands also got destroyed and lost um, and Muslims failed to resist the uh, attacks uh, and then when the final attack happens on the Saudi Arabia which is the second castle of Islam uh, then at that point Muslims are broken or shaken heavily uh, they uh, are at a big loss and they uh, lose their hope in in this uh, and this is when the importance of Pakistan comes into place where Pakistan then becomes or remains as the only castle of Islam only uh, protecting castle of Islam uh, and it becomes very important for Pakistan to then regain its feet uh, and fight back and bring uh, glory back to Islam um, now the reasons why Muhammad Qasim has seen that Pakistan flourishes and Pakistan uh, improves and becomes the savior of the Muslims uh, is because shirk is removed from Pakistan uh, once Muhammad Qasim uh, comes into that leadership position in Pakistan uh, that one of the first things he does is to remove shirk and its forms from the country so that Allah's mercy and blessings come upon Pakistan and the people of Pakistan uh, and then Pakistan progresses because of that uh, to a state where it's able to defend uh, the Muslim Ummah and then we've got the mentioning of the black jet fighters uh, uh, according to Muhammad Qasim in his dreams these black jet fighters are uh, a gift from Allah to Pakistan uh, and uh, they are the reason why Pakistan uh, is able to defend itself in Ghazwa Hind uh, which uh, basically happens or uh, the war basically gets imposed on Pakistan because it remains as the last castle um, and uh, at that time India is allied with the USA and Israel so India will begin it begin its attack on Pakistan um, and Pakistan defends itself successfully uh, and then Pakistan will go back into the Middle East where the lands of the Muslims have been lost and uh, restore them uh, and Pakistan ends up destroying USA and uh, uh, Russia to bring back the glory to the Muslim woman. Um, now this is the commentary that we have uh, from Muhammad Qasim's dreams 
uh, as per the Malhamatul Kubra is concerned, uh, the World War Three. We have discussed some important points in here that uh, the uh, return of the Khilafa happens. Uh, the return of Khilafa meaning in the sense that Islam is spread and Islam is implemented again. Uh, and we see that from Muhammad Qasim's dream, uh, what happens at the uh, conclusion of World War Three. And then we uh, also have heard that the importance of the uh, black flags or the blackjack fighters uh, in Muhammad Qasim's dream. These are the black flags that have been prophesied in the hadiths that they will emerge from the area east of Khorasan. We have covered a great uh, detail about these hadiths uh, in in previous lecture about Pakistan so I encourage you to have a look at that uh, but anyway these are the uh, flags or the indications of the black um, symbolic figures that are in the hadiths uh, and these are the ones that then liberate the Muslim um ummah uh, throughout after World War III. Um, now, this war will result in a lot of casualties and uh, loss to the Muslim Ummah, uh, but there will be some respite uh, when it comes to the um, situation that happens in Pakistan and then Pakistan uh, it becomes the safeguard for the Muslim Ummah. Um, now, a lot of the uh, discussions in this the way that the war happens and what it entails it leads to the events of the final times of the uh, qiyamah which is the arrival of the jah uh, uh, some of the uh, scholars i have uh, watched or understood or read about uh, they mention two wars malhamatul kubra and malhamatul uzma um, now, the difference between the two, I haven't been able to configure, uh, but obviously there is another war that happens at the time of the Jal uh, and when the Jal is around, uh, and that war is with the Jal. And Muhammad Qasim has seen the specific events of that war with the Jal uh, that happens. Uh, I'm not certain, that, I don't think that the war uh, discussed with the Jal is the Malhamat al-Kubra. Uh, Malhamat al-Kubra that is described here uh, in the hadiths is about the war that happens at a great scale that results in significant loss to the Muslim Ummah. Uh, and then, then there's a rise of Islam again that happens after after that. Um, now, Ghazwa Hind, uh, is another important topic we will discuss that in more detail next week uh, but muhammad qasim has seen that this is the uh, part of world war three and it is a focal point or is a turning point which changes the destiny um, for the loss of muslims into the win um, and it becomes a very important critical point in in the history um, or well future to come but it will become in a history of Muslims for that time uh, so inshallah we'll discuss a little bit more about those details in the future uh, well in next week's uh, session now I'm going to have a quick look at some of the questions uh, if we have and that we can answer today and inshallah uh, we will cover up the Topics. Okay, so uh, this is a very interesting question. Many people have said uh, they want to know more about the Jal. We will be covering this topic in two weeks' time, uh, and we will, inshallah, discuss as much detail uh, as we can about the Jal. Uh, as far as the identity of the Jal is concerned. Um, I am not certain if Brother Qasim knows uh, exactly who the Jal is, uh, but even if he did, I don't think we are meant to uh, approach uh, the Jal or uh, criticize the Jal or do anything. Um, as we know that there's a hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where uh, has, has Umar Razila Ta'ala Anho, uh, he met a person uh, who was not accepting the message of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
Uh, and at that time, Hazrat Umar is Atal Anho, he wanted to uh, attack that person or kill that person. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied back to him that even if he was the child, you cannot do anything to him. Uh, so we are we are not going to, um, I guess, even if we know the identity of the child, we, we can't do anything about it. Uh, the jal has some specific powers that Allah has granted him. The jal is a fitna for the Muslim Ummah, but not only for the Muslim Ummah, but for the people, all the people in this world. Uh, the jal is a fitna for the for the belief in Allah. Uh, so uh, we will learn a bit more about it, inshallah, in two weeks' time. Uh, now there's a discussion, there's a question. Uh, whether Pakistan will use atomic weapons at that time. Uh, according to the dreams of Brother Qasim, uh, Pakistan's win or Pakistan's success or the Muslim Ummah's success uh, is only from those 3,000 blackjack fighters. Uh, it is not about the atomic weapons or nuclear weapons. Um, once again, Brother Qasim hasn't specified whether he has seen a nuclear weapon being used uh, but he says that according to his dreams the injuries that he has seen um, on the people in world war three it looks like it was a nuclear weapon or a biochemical weapon because people's skin the skin he saw was melting uh, in the dreams about the, the events that he has seen okay so Yes, inshallah, we will uh, put on captions. There are some older videos that now have captions, so you can go and have a look at them, inshallah. Um, okay, there's a question, uh, which is, what is expected of Ummah at the present time? Uh, very good question. I don't think I'm qualified to answer this from a perspective of a uh, Muslim scholar. Uh, but what I can understand based on Muhammad Qasim's dream is that this is the time for the unity of Muslim Ummah. Um, many of the Muslim Ummah, we are far away from our deen, the teachings of our deen. Uh, we are going into differences. We are fighting amongst each other. Uh, and this is something that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw uh, 1400 years ago. And uh, he feared for the time that will come. Uh, but uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah has uh, presented glad tidings uh, about the future of the uh, Muslim Ummah. And we have the dreams of uh, Brother Qasim that indicate the events that will happen uh, and, and a good future for Muslim Ummah to come. Uh, so what we should expect right now is unity. Uh, and this is what Brother Qasim's dreams uh, also indicate, that uh, Muslims need unity. They need to return to their deen. And uh, the most important aspect of deen is to remove shirk from our life, uh, from our practices. Um, and knowingly and unknowingly, uh, we do many things that are counted uh, as shirk. And uh, this is a very important part or a very important thing that all the prophets of Allah, they came to warn their people of shirk and to remove the practices of shirk. And uh, according to popular belief, shirk is not just uh, not praying to an idol. Uh, shirk comes in many other forms, many other actions. And we should educate ourselves upon shirk. Um, and we should try to actively remove practices of shirk from our life. Um, people should know about Muhammad Qasim dreams. Yes, inshallah, they should. Um, and we want to share this as much as possible. So please do share the dreams of uh, Muhammad Qasim with your family and your friends, inshallah. Uh, where have we got? 
Malaysia, Indonesia, Bangladesh will join the coalition with Pakistan. Yes, inshallah, what Brother Qasim has seen is that the countries from the east um, of where Pakistan is, uh, the Muslim countries, they support Pakistan. Uh, and especially when the war happens in the Middle East, uh, the uh, malhama happens in the Middle East, many of the Muslims flee to Pakistan. Uh, and Brother Qasim has also seen in uh, some of the dreams that uh, at that time, Muslims start to realize at a very large scale that Muhammad Qasim's dreams were true and they came true exactly as they had as he had seen them. So the population of Pakistan grows uh, very, very quickly. Um, Brother Qasim mentioned to me uh, that there was uh, maybe more than 70 crore population of Pakistan. Uh, let's just we'll do a quick analysis and see uh, what that means. So we've got so the population of Pakistan at the moment is about 220 million and Brother Qasim has seen that it becomes 700 million in a very short amount of time. Uh, so that's, you know, four times increase almost, um, which is uh, very, very profound and very interesting. So uh, there will be a time when uh, people will realize Muhammad Qasim's dreams uh, and they will uh, jump to Pakistan. And the way that Muhammad Qasim has seen uh, in his dreams that people will strap themselves to the airplanes, uh, because the plane capacity will be full, they will strap themselves to the airplanes to come to Pakistan uh, because they understand the importance of Ghazwa Hind and they understand the importance uh, of what Pakistan will play in the future. Inshallah. Okay. I have one question. Can Muhammad Qasim speak Arabic? Uh, Muhammad Qasim cannot speak Arabic. Uh, he His native language is Urdu. Um, he obviously le reads the Quran, so uh, uh, there seems to be some error. Okay, never mind. So, Mama Qasim has seen that. Um, uh, well, Muhammad Qasim, sorry, this question was about whether he can speak Arabic or not. Uh, so Muhammad Qasim can read Arabic, but he cannot speak Arabic. Maybe in the future he's able to. Uh, inshallah, Allah knows best. Okay. Yes, you're right. Russia is Orthodox Christian. Before Malhamatul Kubra, who's going to become our Muslim ally? Is it America or Russia or other country? Okay, so once again, we don't know about that specific aspect because Muhammad Qasim has not seen uh, a dream uh, about this. Uh, but what we understand is that uh, at the time of Malhama, uh, many Muslims will come from across the world uh, to help Pakistan. Um, and uh, Pakistan will uh, basically receive help from other Muslim countries uh, and major Muslim countries will join forces with Pakistan, inshallah. Okay, well, thank you very much. There's uh, a lot of discussions. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us increase our knowledge uh, about our deen and the practice of our deen and uh, help us be more pious uh, servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we all want to do what is good for the Muslim ummah uh, and we want to do things that are good for our deen um, so inshallah ta'ala I pray to Allah that Allah grants us that ability in the future uh, and in our lives and uh, allows us to do good and accepts our good 
uh, in the Akhirah. Ameen. Summa Ameen. Jazakam Allah Khair. Inshallah, next week's topic we have Uqas Hind. So please log in uh, and uh, we'll see you at that time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.